So you walk in the house and do some sniffing. Man, something smells really good. And you sniff a little bit more and you realize you're smelling chocolate chip cookies. I don't know about you, but walk in the house and somebody's baked bread or chocolate chip cookies or uh, that's a really good smell. That's really, the question is, makes your mouth water, makes you ready to go, makes you want to go over there and grab a couple and just eat them right there while they're hot a little personally. Not a big fan of chocolate chip cookies hot, all melty chocolate and stuff. No, nah, you got to have them with a the chocolate little salad. So anyway, uh, how does that smell get there? Where is it coming? The smell is obviously coming from the cookies, but how does it get there? What is happening to get the smell there? And believe it or not, that uh, question relates directly, or the answer to that question is directly related to our topic for today, whoops, sorry about that, movement of molecules and the cell membrane. We're going to take a look at the cell membrane in detail, a little bit of detail, and then we're going to talk about five ways things get in and out of it, and I'll explain that in a minute. The cell membrane is called selectively permeable. Selectively permeable. The definition of that means that certain things get in and out, but not all things. That the cell membrane sort of chooses what goes in and out. And I say sort of chooses because it doesn't really have a brain. And so making a choice is not something, a choice is a brain function, not a, our door doesn't choose what goes in and out of it. The door to the classroom, though, does help things get in and out. In other words, you and I can go in and out of the door. An elephant would not be able to go in and out of the door. It doesn't fit. So in that way, the doorway is sort of a selectively permeable entrance into the classroom, if you think about it that way. Cell membrane works in kind of the same way. We're going to start by taking a look at the cell membrane and just talk about some of the parts of it that we'll be referring back to. This is a diagram out of almost every high school and college textbook made now that have a diagram, something like this is a cell membrane. This is what we're pretty sure the cell membrane looks like. Let's label this a minute. Uh, the cell membrane is made of mostly this double layer. It's called the phospho lipid for phosphate and fat, phospholipid by layer for two layers. There's this layer of fat. You need to picture the cell membrane as sort of like a soap bubble. A soap bubble. Okay? If you make a bubble, if you blow a bubble with soap and you look at it, you'll see that the the surface of the cell membrane, the surface of the soap bubble is not stationary, right? If you really look at a soap bubble, you see that it looks like stuff is moving around on the surface of it, and it is. Soap is a, is a, not really a phospholipid layer, but it's very much like it. And so you can relate a cell membrane sort of, kind of like a soap bubble. Except, through the cell membrane, going all the way through the cell membrane, you have these purple structures. Here they're purple. They're not really purple in real life, but... They're proteins. And those proteins serve as doorways into and out of the cell. Those proteins serve as doorways into and out of the cell. Also here on the surface of the cell membrane, you see these little structures here. Those are carbohydrate molecules.
and their important in cell recognition. We're going to actually talk later on in second semester when we talk about the immune system of the body, we'll be talking about how cells have to recognize each other. But uh, those are little carbohydrates that are attached to the surface of every cell. Those are the most important things on here. There's some other stuff. Um, things that help cells hold each other together that we're really not going to talk about very much. We might deal with those in a lab or something in class, but we're not going to talk about those very much right now. Okay, so we have the phospholipid bilayer, we have the protein channels, and then later on we'll talk about those carbohydrate things. Now, again, you need to understand this. The cell membrane is not stationary. It's fluid. It's always moving. Okay, and this is a really important idea that a lot of people can ha sometimes have a hard time with. So, how do things get in and out of a cell? How do they get through that cell membrane? So it looks like it's pretty, I mean, if you look at your skin, it doesn't look like anything can get in and out of your cells, right? If you think of a cell, you think of it as like a wall, kind of. It's like this, this membrane around it is kind of like this walled off thing, but it's not. And you look at this classroom wall and you're like, well, nothing can get in and out, get through a wall. Sure it can. Sure it can. If you have a door, if you have a vent, things can get through there. You have to have ways to get through it, but you can. There are five ways things get in and out of cells. Way number one is something called diffusion. And what we're going to do uh, with this is... We're going to just give you the basic definitions with notes, and then we're going to delve into these a little more deeper in class time. Okay, diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. What we call downhill. And if we think about chocolate chip cookies, for example, when you walk into a place that has just made chocolate chip cookies, you're getting the smell. But where is that smell coming from? It's coming from the cookies themselves, correct? And what's actually moving, what's actually moving, those are literally molecules of chocolate chip cookie. That's what you're smelling, molecules of chocolate chip cookie. If somebody were to pass gas in class and... Maybe you've done it, and you're hoping nobody smells else, and somebody's like, oh, man, oh, man, who did that? Who did that? And you pretend that it was somebody else near you, or you don't say anything because you don't want everybody to know it was you. Okay? And you smell it first, and then you know because those mar molecules are actually going to move away from your rear end, and they're going to move out through the classroom. And somebody, especially the people that are close, are going to smell it. And we can talk later on about smell and why sometimes when people are far away they don't smell it because molecules are at a lower concentration. The idea is, like say here's our cookie. Molecules are being given off the cookie. Okay, here is where the molecules are at the highest concentration. Out here is where they're at lower concentration and molecules will move from high concentration to low concentration. Again, we'll take a look at this in some detail in class. We use the term downhill, high to low concentration. Important point, this requires no energy from the cell to do. Requires no energy of a cookie. Cookies don't have energy in and of themselves. The heat energy helps. Number two, something called osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of water molecules from an area of high concentration to low concentration or downhill. Again, I would encourage you, I'm going I'm to go to this one in a minute, but I would encourage you to take the time oh, uh, to take the time to look at any hyperlinks that are attached to the uh, PowerPoints in the Moodle page. Again, this requires no energy input. Number three, something called facilitated diffusion. Now, before we do this, we already know what diffusion is. 
the movement of molecules from high to low concentration. The word facilitate, oops, the word facilitate means to help. Helped diffusion, or the diffusion of molecules through those embedded proteins. We call that downhill. Molecules are moving, again, downhill. The diffusion of molecules through the protein channels. So we have our cell membrane and it has this protein channel in it. The only way certain molecules can get through there is if they go through those channels. Okay, they have to be helped through the cell membrane. They go through the channel. Why would that be? Well, certain molecules are too big. Now, the cell membrane is made up of those little phospholipid things, right? Well, there are molecules that are small enough to squeeze between there. Kind of like how ants can get through the cracks in the wall in the classroom or into your house through little tiny cracks. Okay? Certain molecules are too big, so they have to go through protein channels. They have to go through protein channels. We call that downhill. Or we call that uh, facilitated diffusion. Again, coming back to this a little later. Number four, active transport. Active transport. In active transport, the cell pumps molecules from low concentration to high concentration or uphill. This requires energy. A, sometimes, here's the cell, cells have inside of them things that they don't really want. However, outside, there's not much concentration of them. Since molecules would like to move from, I'm sorry, outside, there's a lot of it. A good example of this is sodium. You get your sodium from table salt, okay, and your body naturally has quite a bit of sodium in it, but your cells, certain cells, don't necessarily want sodium. So they would need to pump, if they don't want this sodium, it's drawn as little pluses, they need to move it. The problem is, Sodium would like to come in. It's going, it wants to go from high to low. But to go from low to high, the cell has to pump those. That requires energy on the part of a cell. It requires the cell to use energy. We call that, to show its energy, active transport. Fifth, this is probably the easiest one to understand. Endocytosis, there's also exocytosis, which is the opposite, is literally when cells eat particles too large to diffuse. When a cell eats particles that can't get in and out through the membrane. Certain cells like white blood cells are really good at this. White blood cells will eat bacteria for you. So, I can do a quick diagram of this. It's pretty easy to understand. Here's a cell. Here's a particle. Cell particle. Cell particle. And finally, cell particle. It's taking it directly into itself by eating. Those are the five ways the cell transports substances.